So today's video is about dividing a whole number with a decimal. So some important vocabulary that you need for this particular part of the unit is the divisor, which is the number that is dividing um, the dividend into parts or groups, and the divisor is always outside the house. Then you need to know the dividend, and that's the number that's actually being divided, and that's going to go inside the house. And then you have your quotient, which is the answer to the division problem, and it's always going to go on top of the house. So how excuse me, how will division change from what I learned in elementary school? So the steps for division will be the same. You're still going to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, start over. However, instead of showing what is left over as a remainder, you're now going to show what's left over using a decimal. So we're not going to have any more remainders with the R. Now, um, when we have things left over, we're actually going to use decimals and keep going. And also, the number that goes inside the house will not always be the bigger number. I know in elementary school, usually your teacher said put the bigger number inside the house and the smaller number outside. But now that you're in middle school, that's not always going to be the case. You're actually going to have some situations where the number that goes inside the house is actually going to be smaller than the number that's outside the house. So let's look at an example. So our first example, we're going to we're just going to be dividing whole numbers and we're going to be dividing them without using a remainder. So our very first step is to set up the division problem placing the divisor outside the house and the dividend inside the house. So here's our house. Our divisor is 8 cuz that's the number that's doing the dividing and then 36 is being divided by 8, so 36 is going to go inside the house and that's our dividend. We're going to check to see if the divisor is a whole number. So when we look at our divisor, we first want to say, well, is this actually a whole number? And it is. And you know it's a whole number when you don't see um, anything after the decimal or you don't see a decimal. Next, Our next step is to divide using the same steps for division that we have always used. So we'll start by dividing 8 into 36, and it goes in there four times. 4 times 8 gives us 32. Then we will subtract 30, 36 minus 32, and we would get 4. Now, normally, we would say that since we don't have anything to bring down, that we would have a remainder of 4. But now we're actually going to keep going. So instead of using a remainder, what we're actually going to do is we're going to add a decimal and a 0 to the dividend. So remember, our dividend is our number inside the house. So we're actually going to add a decimal behind the dividend and the number zero and then we're actually going to keep going so what we're going to do in our last and our next step is we're going to bring the decimal up so we're going to bring the decimal on top of the house decimals go up numbers come down and then we're going to bring the zero down and actually start over because remember every time you bring something down you have to start over so we're going to start over and now we're going to see how many times eight can go into forty and eight goes into forty five times and then five times eight is forty and then we subtract forty minus forty and we get zero once you subtract and you get zero and you have nothing left to bring down you're finished so the answer to this problem thirty six divided by eight would equal four and a half or four and five tenths so let's look at another one this is an example when we're dividing a smaller number by a bigger number so now i'm going to take one and divide it by Four. And you got to think about it like this. Can you take something that's a whole and can you divide it by something bigger? If I had one apple, could I divide it with four friends? Well, yeah, I could, but it just would mean that all my friends would only get a piece of the apple. They wouldn't get a whole apple. So you can take something that's smaller and divide it by something that's bigger, but what you end up with, what you end up with is just smaller pieces because no one could get a whole because you don't have enough for that. So let's actually do this example. So if I had one apple and I wanted to divide it with my four friends, let's see how much of an, how much of the apple each friend would get. So the first thing we do is we set up the division problem, placing the divisor outside the house and the dividend inside the house. So again, we have our house here. One is actually being divided by four, so one is actually our dividend. So it's going to go inside the house. And four is actually doing the dividing because I've got four friends who are trying to divide up this one apple. So the four is going to go outside the house. So now, again, you have to check to see, is the divisor a whole number? So I look at my four and I'm asking myself, is four a whole number? And it is. So now I'm going on to my next step. 
Now, we're going to divide using the same steps for division that we have always used. But since 4 can't go into 1, we're going to need, we're going to, need to immediately go ahead and add a decimal and a 0 from the beginning because 4 can't go into 1. Then, again, just like before, you're going to bring the decimal on top of the house. So the decimal is going to go up on top of the house. And then we're going to actually go ahead and divide. So when we divide, we're now dividing 4 into 10. So now we're going to see how many times 4 can actually go into 10. And we know 4 can go into 10 two times. And the 2 has to go on top of the 0, not the 1. So then I multiply 4 times 2, and that gives me 8. I subtract, and I get 2. Now remember, we don't have remainders anymore. So we can't just say we have 2 tenths remainder 2. Now once we have a number that we have, um, if we have a number left, that means we have to do what? We're going to have to add another 0 to the dividend, bring that 0 down, and then once you bring something down, you have to start over. So now we're going to see, well, how many times does 4 go into 20? And 4 goes into 20 five times. Again, we subtract. 5 times 4 is 20. We subtract 20 minus 20, and now we have 0. And once you have 0 and you, ha you don't have anything else to bring down, you're finished. So that means that 1 divided by 4 will give us 25 hundredths. So basically, 25 hundredths is the same as 1 fourth. So that means everyone would get a 1 fourth piece of the apple. So basically, I'd have to take my apple and cut it into 4 equal size pieces and everyone would get one fourth of the apple. So yes, can you take something smaller and divide it by something bigger? Yes, but when you do, your answer is only going to be a part or a piece. It won't be a whole. So our next example is to divide, is to divide a decimal by a whole number. So this is an example when your dividend already has a decimal in it. And what do you do? So step one, you're going to set up the division problem. So we have our bracket here. Our 8 is what's doing the dividing. So we have 148 and 8 tenths being divided by 8. So it's, because it's being divided by 8, that means 8 is the divisor. And then 148 and 8 tenths is the dividend. Again, we're going to check to see, is our divisor, the number outside the house, is this a whole number? So we're looking at this number here, and yes, 8 is a whole number. So we can go on to the next step. So now the next thing we want to do is actually divide. And we're going to use the same steps for divisions we always, we've always used. But since we already have a decimal in the dividend, we're just going to go ahead and bring it up on top of the house. Because remember, the decimal always goes up. It doesn't come down. Numbers come down, but the decimal goes up. And then we're just going to do division. So I'm going to start by dividing 8 into 1, but it can't go into 1. So now I'll say, how many times can 8 go into 14? Well, we know that it can go into 14 one time. Well, 1 times 8 gives us 8. We subtract and we get 6. So the next step is to bring down the 8. So then 8 goes into 68 8 times. And 8 times 8 gives us 64. Then 68 minus 64 gives us 4. So the next thing we'll do is bring down the 8. 8 goes into 48 6 times. And 6 times 8 is 48. Again, we subtract. 48 minus 48, we get 0. We don't have anything left to bring down, so we've actually found our answer. So 148 and 8 tenths divided by 8 will give us 18 and 6 tenths. And the one thing you want to make sure of is that you're lining things up very carefully. Because if the decimal ends up in the wrong spot, it is wrong. If your decimal is not in the correct spot, then your answer is wrong. So you've got to make sure that you're using neat handwriting and you're lining up your numbers correctly. Because if you make a mistake, it can throw your entire answer off. So I hope you learned something about dividing and using decimals. Remember, we're in middle school now, so now we're actually going to have to get used to doing long division and not having remainders, but using decimals instead. Keep in mind that the number in front of the decimal represents your whole. That means how many whole pieces you have. And then whatever you have after the decimal is what's left over. So it's still the remainder, it just looks a little different. It's how much of a piece do you have left over. All right, don't forget to teach to the tiger something that you learned in today's video.